On a Wednesday evening in Arlington, Texas, it is time for baseball as the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. And tonight, it's the New York Yankees against the Texas Rangers in game three of a four-game set from Globe Life Field in Arlington. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yankees baseball along with Paul O'Neill. I'm Michael Kay. Yankees won last night. A good game for them. They've evened up the series at a game apiece. Game three tonight. So let's take a look at the pitching matchup in this one. Hung Jung Young is going to get the start for the Texas Rangers. Four games. This would be his second start. And Corey Kluber for the Yankees. Three and two with a 3.48 ERA. And Kluber has some reinforcements in the lineup behind him today. And that is Glaber Torres. Glaber Torres coming off the COVID IL. Seven days he missed six games but before he went on the IL Paul he was starting to really hit he really was I mean he was really turning his whole game around and I mean, it's always good to get your everyday players back Labor Torres is your shortstop. He's been making the plays. All of a sudden, you see him starting to spray the ball around a little bit, going the other way. And finally, I think everything stems from that first home run on Mother's Day with the big bat. I think that will take that big monkey off his back and get things going. Hopefully, he's not rusty. He can come back and help immediately. All right, the first 16 games of the year for Glaber, just 186, two extra base hits. But in the last 17, as Paul said, picking it up, 277, four extra base hits, drove in nine, and in five multi-hit games. In fact, a lot of the Yankees are starting to feel it. They're starting to rate big hits, big moments. When we come back, lineups, first pitch, baseball. Yankees Rangers next, right here on Yes. Crowd filing into Globe Life Field. Some nice drinks there, but as you enjoy the drink, Paul's going to give you the keys to the game. Brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Paul, without the drink. Ah, remember the fourth. I'm talking about the fourth inning last night. Uh, I think it was the fav my favorite inning, Michael, this year offensively. I mean, it's just great at bat. Six hits, five runs, and believe it or not, no home runs. So a uh, big inning for the Yankees. Labor Day. You know what? It's always good to get him back. We talked about it in the pregame after missing seven games. We got Glaber back at shortstop tonight. Hopefully he can start where he picked up. Pick left off, Michael. He's doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. Expecting and heating up. You know, Luke Voigt got his first home run. Miggy starting to hit. I can just see them being a huge part of this offense. Luke Voigt, six for 13 in his last three games. Miggy, the last four games. Five for 16. So those two right there can answer a lot of questions in this Yankee lineup offensively. Well, some wind, but doesn't really affect the game because the roof is closed here at Globe Life. The Yankees and the Rangers. Tomorrow's an afternoon game. When we take a look at the uh, Yankee starting lineup, which is brought to you by TikTok, it starts on TikTok. So LeMahieu, Voigt, and Judge up top, then Urshela, Torres, and Andujar in the middle. And Paul mentioned that Torres activated from the COVID IL, first game since May 11th. And then the bottom third is Gardner, Higashioka, and Ryan Lamar. Now, there was no Clint Frazier for the second straight day. And uh, according to Yankee manager Aaron Boone, it's a neck thing. He didn't exactly elaborate what a neck thing meant, but it's a neck thing. And there he's receiving treatment. And here is Hun Jung Young making the start for the Rangers. This will be a second start. 16 innings, 13 strikeouts, five walks, and 3.3 ADRA. What do you know about Young, Paul? Well, he, we haven't seen him, but he is a veteran. 14 years he pitched in the Korean League, and he signed a minor league deal with the Rangers and was called up in April this year. Either or, he's done both. He had one other start, three lead relief appearances. So uh, we'll see if he's going to be part of their rotation. And repertoire, how's he go about trying to get you out? And not a hard thrower. Fastball tops out at around 90, just for, just a little under. It's a slider and a change, and he uses them all. So just a pitcher. As a hitter, you got to just be patient and get something to hit. Let's take a look at the defense behind him. It's presented by Geico. Calhoun, Garcia, and Gallo. That's left to right in the outfield. Infield, Culberson is at third. Kind of Faletha is at short. Solak second, low first. 
Behind the plate is Trevino, and Young is on the mound. Two big uh, crowds for the first two games. Look like they're still filing in the Globe Life. Yankees are 20 and 16, and the Rangers are 19 and 25. LeMayu with a big hit in last night's game, hitting 369 with runners in scoring position since becoming a Yankee better than anybody in baseball. LeMayu is ready. Young is ready. And let's do it in Arlington. First pitch is low. We're underway. <laughs> he waited you out, Michael, on let's do it. He got a pause there for you. Brian Addington is the home plate on Bill Miller at first, Doug Eddings at second, Brian Knight is at third. Now this is a very tiny thing, but I wonder if it would annoy a batter. Young is wearing glasses, and the thing that ties around the head is flapping when he pitches. And I wonder if a, a batter would call attention to it. You know, Michael, I was watching him warm up. I'm like, does he have a ponytail? Or is that? And then I figured it out. Yeah, it uh, kind of holds those glasses in place. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. And I mean, you're looking. For an arm angle and a release point, I don't know that that would uh, even come into play from a hitter's point of view. But it's a good way to annoy the pitcher if you ask the umpire to have him change it. <laughs> yes, will work. And there's ball four. So LeMahieu with a leadoff walk. So quickly to the card on the mound and Luke Voigt to the the spray pine tar. He had yesterday off. As Mike Ford played first base and that's the yes swing shift how they play Luke Voigt. Pitch high. One and oh. Last three games, he's starting to heat up now. Off the IL, he was 0 for 10. And then 6 for 13. One and one. And you look at Michael, the one big thing that comes to mind is he got rid of that first home run. And a lot of times, players that we saw it with Torres will start stressing. Over getting that first home run out of the way. Luke Voigt did that the other night, and I think he's going to be good to go. Round it. Right to Culperson. There's one on the first. It's a double play around the horn. The Yankees lead the majors in hitting into grounded into double plays, and they just add one more. And if you want to look at it in a positive way, they have traffic, Paul. They have people on base. That's right. They got men on base, but you see Luke Voigt out in front of the ball a little bit. Young, not a power thrower, but he will change speeds, and you see him kind of reach for that ball, cause him to hit it right at Culberson for an easy double play. Here's Aaron Judge. And he jumps on the first pitch and lines it to right center field. Gallo cuts the ball off. Now, Paul, we've seen a lot of that from Judge lately. He's usually always taking the first pitch. Now he's jumping on it. Yeah, and he even, you know, said it. it, it, it that, you know, he's going to be more aggressive. And, Michael, you can explain all these spaghetti strikes for me. This is where all the hits have gone over the last eight, eight games. There are 14 of them. 14 for 29. And this is from StatCast 3D from Google Cloud. So now he's 15 for 30, and that's 500, Paul. 
There's a strike to so. Urshela. Like if you look back at you know power hitters and they would take a lot of pitches and try to set up pitchers to a certain count where they could look at a ball where you know you could drive out of the ballpark but you know the way pitchers are now there's really never a fastball count so you know to to see guys aggressive early in the count I like that. Yeah I think there's such a an emphasis on on working the count and going deep into the count that sometimes you do let good pitches go just watch them. Check swing did he go. Yes he did said Bill Miller. And that will do it. As Urshela down on strikes. No runs to hit. One man left. Yankees nothing. Rangers coming to bat. Well, there's Corey Kluber. He'll be pitching against his former team, and we'll take a look at the Rangers starting lineup, which is brought to you by TikTok. It starts on TikTok. Let's start with Joey Gallo in right field, batting fifth. So they drop him out of the cleanup spot, and Gallo, one for seven, the one a home run, and four strikeouts. And boy, in that small little graphic, that's what Joey Gallo is. That encapsulates the player that he is, either a home run or a strikeout. And then you see the rest is Chris Davis gets to start at DH. He pinched it yesterday, ended the game looking at a 103 mile an hour fastball from all this chat. So that whole lineup is going to face Corey Kluber. Ninth game, three and two, 3.48. About a strikeout per inning. Now let's take a look at the scouting report, Paul. Wow, let the good times roll. Such a good song by the Cars back in the day, huh, Michael? Yes. The good times are rolling. His last four starts, he's been really good. 4-0, 2.39 ERA. And changed things up, using his change up much more. And in this four-game span, hitters are 3 for 23 off his change up. And X-Team, that's almost a laugh out loud. I mean, he threw one inning for the Rangers before his in injuries last year. And Ended up being a big break for the Yankees. Yep, his shoulder hurt and walked off the mound, and he uh, he never pitched for them again. <laughs> Driven deep to right, and misses the pole. So the one inning last Willie year. Calhoun. I'm sorry, Paul. So Willie Calhoun has really, really given uh, the Yankee pitchers fits as far as being able to get to the ball inside and drive the ball away. And, you know, he got to a couple pitches from Cole. Got to that slider very easily inside off of uh, Kluber. Well, Kluber's one inning with the Rangers, he tore the terrace major muscle in his right shoulder. And that pretty much shut him down didn't pretty much it did um, then he became a free agent at the end of the year and then he strikes out Calhoun and the Yankees as well as a lot of other teams pursued him and the Yankees got him on a one-year deal let's take a look at the defense behind him presented by Geico and Duhart Gardner and Lamar left to right in the outfield infield Urshela Torres LeMahieu and Voigt Higashioka behind the plate Kluber's on the mound I mean, bottom line, Kluber has not pitched a lot in the last two years. The one inning in 2020. And then in 2019, he left the game in the fifth inning of a game after being hit by a comebacker by Brian Anderson. Non-displaced fracture of the right ulnar in his arm. And there was a lot of questions, Paul, coming in. Well, what would he be? Would he be able to return to what he's been? And we had Matt Blake on the other night. And Matt Blake said he's really close to what he was when he was with uh, the Cleveland Indians and winning two Cy Young, Cy Young awards. He never had his success predicated on velocity. It was all about location, and his stuff is pretty good. Yeah, no doubt about it. And he has so much to lean on in the past. I mean, he knows how to pitch. He knows how to set up hitters. I don't know that a young pitcher 
uh, could take a year or two off and then come back. And uh, I think that Kluber all of a sudden, you know, once he gets his stuff back, you don't forget how to pitch. Nifty move there. Wow. That's impressive, Paul. <laughs> it sure was. That's a play you can only do on turf right there. Mm -hmm. Strike three. Solak down looking. I'll tell you what, so Take a look at the Home Depot getting more done. And he's getting a lot done the last four starts. 3-0, 2.39. More than a strikeout per inning. Eight walks. Opponents hitting 219 against him. And um, he struggled early, and you wondered when it was going to happen. Well, it happened. Yeah, he's 3-0, and and they won the other game also. So in his last four starts, the Yankees have won all four. So good things. Low fouls it off. You know, Michael, I was just looking at that sponsor at Home Depot, and I'm, I got mixed emotions here. It says, Why? I love the store. You go in. You, you can go in and get anything you want, right? But mm -hmm. when you leave... You got a project. You got something you got to do. And I'm not a big project guy at home. How about you? Uh, I'm not a project guy anywhere. So, yeah. <laughs> so you know where you can get it. You just call somebody else to do it, is what you're saying. Somebody to help. Maybe, uh, you know, join me in the chore. Grounded right to Voigt. Nice, easy one, two, three inning for Corey Kluber as the Rangers go down in order. We'll go to the second inning. Nothing, nothing on yes. Home to your happy place. Ten years ago, I had an undiagnosed heart condition, and erectile dysfunction was actually the first sign that something was wrong. Luckily, I'm a doctor, an expert in sexual health, and Zach's dad. Not everyone has a doctor in the house, and some health conditions can be really tough to talk about. We well, Saturday night, the Brooklyn Nets begin their playoff run with a nationally televised Game 1 against the Celtics. And yes, we'll have post-game coverage immediately after the final buzzer. So turn back to yes for highlights, analysis, and reaction from players and coaches that Saturday night right here on yes. And yes is going to have Nets coverage throughout the Nets playoff run. So stay with the team that knows the Nets best. I spoke to Steve Nash, the uh, head coach of the Nets today. He said something interesting. Everybody's concerned about the big three having only played eight games together now going into the playoffs. And he said he's not so much concerned about the offense. He's concerned about what they'll do on defense. But he said it's a legitimate concern that people have. And I told him, I said, well, they're three of the greatest players who ever lived. I think they'll figure it out. <laughs> Labor Torres is back, and the count is 1-0. and 2-0. You know, what's interesting to me, Michael, is I actually saw something online today where Kevin Durant tweeted about uh, Otani and J.J. Watt. So other guys are, you know, into other sports. I thought that was interesting. Ground it, right side, moving to the glove side of Solak, and... He's uh, he's in there. Could not see Bill Miller immediately, but uh, Miller signaled safe, and it looked like the throw was a bit late, so a base hit for Glaber. And with the shift to go over there, he just too much time to make, take that angle. Glaber gets out of the box. Here's Andujar. Grounded to short. How about that? Another double play. Two innings, two double plays. It's 
one of the things you love about Miggy is he is aggressive, but again, aggressive in the strike zone is very important. That ball down, just a Taylor made double play. And Andujar made it close. Bang, bang at first base. I'm going to challenge, and you know what? They might have a point, Paul. Again, Michael, you said something to me a while ago on the challenges that the ball does not have to hit the pocket. It has to be entering the glove. And that's so hard to overturn, but you're right. He got down the line quick and made an easy double play. Look very close. Now they go to the uh, the guy who's holding uh, the boombox from High Fidelity, so they can listen to the people back in the uh, control. And he's out. They don't overturn it. That was fast. Boone has to be somewhat befuddled because not only does he challenge it. See, now it's in the body of the glove, and that's what they went by. Because I don't believe it hit the back of the glove before the foot came down, but that they turned it around so quickly. I mean, we've seen much more obvious plays. They take a longer time. Hello, not even stretching, thinking it was an easy double play, but... And Duhar hustling down the line. One one. So the Yankees have grounded into 44 double plays. Two and one. There's the 20th pitch. By Young. And the count is three and one. Gardner's going to see a lot of playing time with Hicks on the IL. He'll probably take a seat every now and then against the left hander, but against righties, he's in there playing center field. Playing against the lefty tonight. There's a ground ball at first. Low takes it himself, and that will do it in the second. No runs to hit, no errors, nobody. Left on base. We're going to the bottom of the second. Well, last year, Corey Kluber pitching for the Rangers pitched exactly one inning. Then he hurt his shoulder. So Ranger fans got to see him face three batters. He got them all out. He ended his Ranger career with a 0.00 ERA. But the Rangers had acquired him from the Indians for Delano DeShields Jr. and Emmanuel Classe, who really throws the ball hard and has been lighting it up this year. So now, as he faces Garcia, Paul, they will have seen him face more batters in a Yankee uniform than they saw him face in a Ranger uniform. Yeah, sometimes things just don't work out the way that you planned them. And I'm sure you could ask Brian Cashman that every time you make a trade, an acquisition, anything, you are taking somewhat of a gamble. A lot of them work. Sometimes they don't. Well, when you look at what the Indians got for Kluber, a guy who the previous year had had a broken arm and obviously was one of the higher paid players, and they were going to have to trade him anyway. They got an arm like Class A, and you wonder why were the Rangers going for a veteran arm when they didn't have a team good enough to win as. Garcia swings and misses. Third strikeout for Kluber.
now. That'll bring up Joey Gallo. And yes, last night, Paul was very interested in Joey Gallo's bat. Meredith has tracked down exactly what's going on, Paul. Paul, I know it's been keeping you up all night. And he actually yes. took a trip this offseason to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to the Mariucci Bat Lab, where they essentially find out what bat is best for you. They tailor it to each player's individual needs. And he usually used, in years past, what is a traditional bat, a little bit more top-heavy. But they told him if he distributed the weight a little bit more, made it more balanced, and have a little bit more weight on that handle, as you see the knob right there, it would put him in a position to swing a little bit better, his hands would be quicker, and that would allow him to barrel up more baseballs. So, kind of interesting. Paul, did you ever go to a bat lab? No, uh, I went to Louisville Slugger just to see how it was done and, and things like that. It's a really cool experience, but this reminds me almost of like a club fitting for in golf, which is so important now. I mean, it's, it seems like that's gonna be coming up here in the future. Popped up, shallow center field. Here comes Gardner to put it away for the second half. Well, Paul, it's funny you say that because the lab started with a golf lab and then they transitioned into baseball to fit baseball players with their bats. So it does seem as though that is the wave of the future and you wonder if a lot of hitters are going to start doing that in years to come. Look at Meredith tracking that down. It's unbelievable, and you know when thinking back of going to the you know the Louisville Slugger Bat Factory there in Louisville, I mean it is so amazing how many different models there are, how many different handles, barrels, weights of the bat, and those places are so special because they have bats you know from Babe Ruth to Mickey Mantle to the you know, the greats of the game. You know I, I remember picking up Babe Ruth's bat, and it was a uh, just like how could you even hit with this thing? And, and, Bernie Williams, I've said it many times. I used to pick up Bernie's bat. I'm like, Bernie, this is the ugliest bat I've ever seen. But obviously, he did well with it. So it's, it's a personal preference. Another one, two, three inning for Kluber as we go to the third. Well, Yankee fans, get your New York Yankees individual game tickets today and catch some amazing upcoming games at Yankee Stadium. There's a great matchup coming up against the White Sox, plus big divisional games against the Red Sox, Blue Jays, and Rays. Visit Yankees.com to get all your information about ticket availability and to purchase tickets. Tickets are going fast, so visit Yankees.com today. I, I am personally really looking forward to the White Sox this weekend at the stadium. That should be a blast. That's a pretty good team the Yankees will be facing starting on Friday night. We go to the third, Montefiore scoreboard. Nothing, nothing. Higashioka, Lamar, and LeMahieu. Well, Kluber, a 12-pitch first inning and an 8-pitch second inning. Fly ball center field. Garcia makes the play, one away. I've got to follow up on something with you, Paul. Why was Bernie Williams' bat so unattractive to you? It just, it had a weird handle, and there was really no barrel to it. It was almost like a fungo bat. It's just like, Bernie, where, where do you hit the ball on this thing? Because most bats, there's a sweet spot, you know, just above the label, and that's where you want to hit the ball. His bat just, it really had no thickness anywhere to the point where you felt like you really hit something hard, but it was perfect for him. Sounds like a stickball bat. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd like to do, Paul, if you don't mind. As Lamar fouls one off. Next time you're here, mm -hmm. we go on Jerome Avenue or River Avenue and find a wall, and I will get a Spalding. And you'll have a stickball bat, and I want to see if I can strike you out. You know what? I've never played stickball. I've heard all the stories. I mean, we could put this on TV. You know? and, and I'll, just, I'll just edit it. I'll ed if you strike me out, I will edit it, believe me. But I hope I take you deep because the stick, uh, the whatever, you get, the flip, oh, I'll be doing cartwheels out of the box when I go deep off of you. Oh, I'd, I'd like to try. Nice. 
I, I just know that growing up the Bronx, we played that all the time, and you would go up against the wall, and there'd be a box drawn it, and, and you throw as hard as you could, and every, like, mm-hmm. 10, 12, 14-year-old threw 500 pitches as hard as they could. Nobody tore a rotator cuff. It's amazing. No pitch counts in sick <laughs> No ball, pitch huh? counts, no. <laughs> you, you played till mom called you for dinner. 2-2. Two, two. Meredith, you're in on this? A hundred percent, Michael. I can't wait. I'd be happy to be the videographer if need be. I'd be happy to strike you out if need be. Oh. <laughs> wow. There we go. Now we got a double challenge. <laughs> now, the ball doesn't have to bounce. You just throw no, it in there. No, throw it as strike, hard as you right? can. You bou- no, throw it as I hard see. as you can. Could you imagine the people in the neighborhood that are watching us thinking, what are these three doing out there? <laughs> oh, we'd get a crowd. There's a ground ball of short. And it looks like somebody just oh. pulled a hamstring. Wow, Lamar grabs his hamstring immediately. And that is trouble. Ah, oh, he has worked so hard to get back to the big leagues. And then this happens on a, a simple ground ball of short. So coming out of the box, let's see. I'd say he doesn't even, you know, he was kind of what you do as a player and just kind of stride it out. Boy, it just grabbed. That's awful. That's just terrible. Thirty two years old. He had not played in the big league since 2019. Gets an opportunity. There's playing time out there for him and and you get hurt this way. Now, what are some of the moves the Yankees could make here, Meredith? Is Clint Frazier a playable player? Supposedly, he is available off the bench today. At least that's what Aaron Boone said pregame. As you noted, he's dealing with a little bit of a neck issue. I asked if that dated back to one of those catches that he made, and he said they are still trying to track down exactly when it started. But he wasn't going to play yesterday all along. Aaron Boone had circled that day as an off day for Clint Frazier. But then today when he came in, he said he felt a little bit of soreness. He was getting some treatment, but was supposedly going to go through a full pregame routine. So as long as he got through that okay, I would imagine that you may see Clint Frazier out there. Now we just saw as he was walking, as Lamar was walking out the field, that Tyler Wade grabbed the glove. He's another option for the outfield as well. So if they're going to use Wade here, a lefty against a lefty, then Frazier's probably not playable at this point, you would think. But we'll see who plays right field in the bottom of the inning. There's a strike. Oh, and two. LeMay, who walked in the first inning. left-hander rocks and deals check swing ground ball to first low is there and the Yankees go down in order one two three and they lose a right fielder as well what looked like a hamstring injury we go to the bottom of the third well let's check out the T-Mobile coverage camp today is uh, I guess mystery bobblehead now you could receive a bobblehead from any of the years and some people got Corey Kluber's bobblehead they only pitched one inning they probably never gave it a Gave it away last year, so they're giving it away today on Mystery Bobblehead Day. You'd say that's a collector's item, Paul, right? You you would think one inning. I mean, uh, obviously his past is is why you want his bobblehead. He's one of the game's best, but as a Ranger, that is a little strange. Well, Tyler Wade makes his 12th career game in right field. He's played 36 and two-third innings out there, taking over for Ryan Lamar. Montefiore scoreboard, nothing, nothing, and the first pitch to Connor Falefa is outside 1-0. and Now 
Now, Paul, we have confirmation of, of what you said about Bernie's bat. Uh, mm -hmm. The great actor, Nick Totoro, who's a huge Yankee right. fan, watches every inning. He sent along a video. He's got one of Bernie's bats, and he said, it's really right. a terrible-looking bat. <laughs> I appreciate the support because it is, I never could figure it out. And he used it from their left hand and, and right hand, and he didn't change bats. He used it from both sides. And they try out Wade right away. That's how it works. One down. Boy, nothing better, though, to get your feet wet is a nice, easy fly ball, not a hard one. Tyler Wade, now he's into the game. There's the bat. See that? I mean, if I had my little telestrator, see where all the ball marks are? That's where you want to hit the ball. There's no wood there. <laughs> Bernie, what are you doing? You got all the wood at the end of the bat. That's not where you want to hit it. It's hard to criticize, Paul. He did okay. Way good. Way good. <laughs> Way good. <laughs> Just think what he would have done if he had a real bat. Remember early in the year, Michael, you would see Kluber's slider, and it was kind of up and down, kind of rolling. Now it's got that horizontal just snap, and it, it's such a different pitch. That's what he had in the past, and that's what he got back. I mean, it is nasty to right-handed hitters. So Charlie Culberson works the walk off of Kluber, so that's the first base runner the Rangers have. Here's Jose Trevino. There's a strike. One and one. Not a dead pull. They do have two infielders on each side of second. Bottom of the third inning. Nothing, nothing. Trevino back in the lineup tonight. He is our everyday catcher. And if you go back at his minor league days, he's a gold glove winner in the minor leagues. So, you know, a defensive guy hoping if you're a Rangers fan that he can turn it around and add some offensively, but very, very solid behind the plate. Trevino is from Texas, Corpus Christi. Six round pick in 2014 out of Oral Roberts. Fourth big league season. Swing and a miss. Trevino down on strikes. Four Ks. Tell you what, he's really. Leaning on that uh, slider and it is breaking and 
you know, a lot of sliders kind of up and down. His slider just continues to run away. See how small the dot on that is. And the, the smaller you can get that dot, the harder it is for the hitter to pick it up. And it just, it, it's such a sharp breaking slider. Keeping Culberson close. Paul, if I was a clubhouse guy, like with the Yankees, the Kakuzas, that would drive me nuts the pine tar on his helmet <laughs> yeah i guess you know what and you remember like robinson cano they would have tons of pine tar on their shoulder from mm -hmm. laying the bat on their shoulder and yeah that's that's not the easiest thing robbie does a great job of getting that stuff out and again as a player you get so used to wearing the same uniform and things like that that you know you don't want to take it off the shelf is just because you know it got a rip in the knee or this or that you want to keep your same stuff and you use that <laughs> on everything now sky high pop up shallow right that's LeMahieu out there he'll put it away That'll do it in the third. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on base. Let's go to the fourth inning. Nothing, nothing. Well, it's a food fight, an MLB food fight presented by MasterCard to determine which ballpark food is best this year. Fill out your bracket, and then you can vote for the Yankee Stadium Lobel Steak Sandwich at MLB.com slash food fight today. Now, at Globe Life today, it's dollar hot dog night. <laughs> But get this, they limit you to just five. I don't know if they care about your health or they don't want to give away too many hot dogs. Yeah. I still have not seen that seat where the, you know, the, the first night, what was that called? The, the, the boom, boom stick. Boom stick yeah. or boom stick. Oh, my goodness. You know, our friend who was devouring the boom stick that day, he was on Sports Center. <laughs> they, they were breaking down how he attacked the boomstick. It's got its own carrying case. It's delightful. I don't think that's a dollar, Paul. <laughs> no. 0-2 oh, on Voight. Well, young, a little more on him, Michael. He was the MVP of the league over there in 2017. 20 and 6. Two times. He won their equivalent to the Cy Young. Was very successful before he came over here. He's looked very good so far tonight as he strikes out Voight. That's a forcing fastball, and he kind of got away with it. That ball's right there. Luke Voigt just underneath a little bit. So here's Judge. Now is that making fun of, of you know, a New Yorker's accent? Hot dogs? <laughs> Rounded to short. Paul, you didn't know me then, but at the age of like 20, that's that's how I spoke. I tell you what, I knew that I had been in New York a long time when my kids came home from summer camp, you know, still five, six, seven years old and asked for water. I'm like, water? What do you mean water? I 
we drink water around here. I don't know what you want, but I knew I was in New York when I started hearing that. But kids have great memories of that. And your son that became a doctor, he knows it's good to drink water. Well, yeah, that's right. You're, you're, you're exactly right. Rochelle has struck out in the first inning. The 1-0. 2-0. Two one. Tries to pull that outside pitch and grounds it to Culberson, and that will do it. Another one, two, three inning. And Young has retired eight Yankees in a row. Time for trivia. Corey Kluber pitched in one game for the Rangers. Who's the only other Cy Young winner to appear in exactly one game for a team? Wow. Mm. Now, the clue is it's an ex-teammate of yours, Paul. Wow, I guess I should know the answer, but it's not, it's not coming up real quick. So how many Cy Young Award winners did you play with? Coney. Clemens, Coney. Uh, Anybody with the Reds? You got a double, double question for me, Michael. Now I'm really confused. I don't think anybody uh, with the Reds, right? Can't think of one. Owen, oh two. Tell you what, Michael, this is like turning back the clock. I mean, his slider is ridiculous tonight. I mean, it's just sharp breaking. You can tell hitters are not picking up the baseball. Another wow. strikeout. Such a tight spin on that ball. You just have no chance as a hitter to adjust to it. His breaking ball tonight, 0 for 5, now with four strikeouts with it. So it's been his go to again to lefties and righties. Very economical. Fly ball deep right field. Wade is back. He has room. And he puts it away. And that'll bring up Adolis Garcia. And time for Jimmy John's freaky fresh take. Let's see what we have on Garcia. All right, since April 13th, tied for first in home runs with 11. First in RBIs with 30. Tied for seventh in hits with 38. And the home run total is tied with Otani. And it's not like he started in a slump, as Paul mentioned yesterday. He, he was DFA'd by the Rangers in spring training, then signed to a minor league deal, and they called him up. When Ronald Guzman got hurt. Oh. All of a sudden, he's a name in the American League. I mean, a good, solid player defected in 2016. Actually played a year in Japan. 
for the Cardinals signed him in 2017. So he's kind of been around, but all of a sudden now it seems like everything's coming together. Three one on Garcia. He's the cleanup hitter tonight. Pitch. Foul away, three and two. You know, it's amazing to me as many great sliders as he's thrown tonight. He got that one over the middle of the plate. You could see that he was so frustrated with himself. That's the problem when you're a perfectionist. You expect every pitch to be perfect. And the 3 2. Right in on the hands, foul back. So Garcia battling. Sky to center field. Gardner's there to put it away. And a 1 2 3 inning work by Corey Kluber. He certainly looks great tonight. We go to the fifth. Otani, the talk of sports. 14 home runs this season, most in the majors. He's starting tonight against Cleveland, batting second. Fernando Tatis Jr. back in the lineup. He was 4 for 4 with a home run today. And uh, first game off the COVID IL. And the White Sox, 26 and 16. It's the best winning percentage in the American League, and we will see them. On Friday, Yankees against the White Sox at the stadium. Two zero on Torres, who picked up a hit in his first at bat coming off the COVID IL. The Yankee players had some fun with Glaber coming back. They they had a. Uh, a medical gown in his locker and the loads of masks <laughs> and things like that. And that's ball four very close Torres took it and he works a lead off walk here in the fifth. They also put two plexiglass separators between his locker and the lockers near him. As you know Paul athletes humor could be very cruel. Nothing's off limit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once, you know, once everything's okay, I mean, if somebody's injured or this or that, you know, then you, you never go the next step. But as soon as somebody's okay or somebody's back, yeah, it's a free for all. And here's the, here's the locker, the hazmat suit, and all the, uh, the mask. And I guess there's a bottle of Purell there. And they have the rope in front of the, <laughs> the rope in front of the, uh, wow. the locker. And Duhar wrapped into a double play his first time up. Very close play at first on the return throw. You wonder with the injury to Lamar, what's what's the Yankees' next move? They're, they're going to have to bring in another outfielder. Will it be Esteban Florial? Rounded to third. This could be another double play, and it is. The Yankees have hit into three double plays tonight. Again, ball hit hard just right at him, and once the play is made, nothing Miggy can do. Caught it in the heel, but got rid of it quickly, and a good turn by Solak.
45th grounded into double play this season, the most in the majors. And Paul, those that argue about the three true outcomes, and that's that's the way you want the team to play. Mm -hmm. The argument is if you put the ball in play, that you can hit into a double play. If you strike out, that's just one out. <laughs> mentioned Floreal if maybe he's a possibility. He's the only outfielder left on the 40 man roster but he's only played three games above double A. Greg Allen we saw in spring training could have been a possibility when Hicks went down but um, he's been hurt as well so I don't think he's an option this time. Maybe we get good news that Lamar it's just a cramp like it was yesterday with Sanchez but looked like it was more than that. Yeah, cramp. You keep walking. <laughs> when that grabs like that, Michael, that's usually a bad sign. So don't expect him uh, to be in a Yankee uniform tomorrow. And they do have another option. Aaron Judge, of course, could play the outfield, but he's DHing tonight, and you wonder uh, how they're going to use that position moving forward. But it's not that they don't have enough outfielders on the roster. They will eventually need to make a move, though, depending on what's happening with Aaron Hicks as the Yankees get out of the inning. We go to the bottom of the fifth. We're halfway through. It's nothing, nothing. Well, here's a trivia question we gave you earlier. Cooper pitched in one game for the Rangers. Who's the only other Cy Young winner to appear in exactly one game for a team? It's an ex-teammate of Paul's. We can't figure out who this might be. Now we will find out. Mike Gooden. Wow. Astros in 2000. It's funny. I remember. Do you remember when the Astros opened that new ballpark and we went down there to as an exhibition to open that ballpark and Doc actually pitched that day. So I do remember him being with Houston. I didn't know it was only one game though. There's Kluber's line tonight as Gallo leads off the fifth inning. Swing and a miss. You know, we keep giving you the Yankees double play total grounded into double play total. Let, let me put it into a bit of perspective. They have 45 they've hit into. The team average in the major leagues right now is around 29. So they are well above the average number that most teams are at. One and two on Gallo. Gallo with a fly ball to center in the second. 34 strikes, 16 balls. Just missed outside. Strike three. Oh. Gallo down looking. I, I've never seen sliders with this kind of movement, Michael, and that's the first one you've seen back door to a lefty. I need to tell you, this is really something. I mean, he's been on the inside to lefties. He's been away to righties. I mean, it has been just absolutely a pleasure to watch. This is some kind of breaking ball tonight. Over and over again. Went back door to Gallo, picked up his sixth strike out. Here's Chris Davis, who grounded the second in the second. Swing and a miss on one.
You know, Michael, this kind of defends a statement that I've always said, and you've brought it up to me numerous times. It's like, you know, if you know you're getting a slider from Kluber, why would you not go up and look for it? But I'm telling you right now, you could look for this slider, and the ones he's thrown so far, you're not going to hit it. I mean, it's been that good. Well, just one walk to Charlie Culberson in the uh, third and six strikeouts. One, two. And went to the changeup. And Chris Davis, I mean, if that name rings a bell, yeah, he has had some phenomenal years out in Oakland. 2016, 17, 18, led the league in home runs with 48. 2018 so I mean tons of power it's the first 34 games this year with a left quad strain so crazy kind of power and you want to hear a crazy stat Michael mm -hmm. I've never even seen or heard this before 2015 16 17 and 18 he hit 247 every single year never been done before four consecutive years 247 Consistency. Consistent, huh? Yeah. <laughs> did he go? Yes, he did. Another strikeout as Davis strikeout victim number seven. You see Davis's first move is to open up. No chance to cover that slider. Pitch count in great shape, 59 pitches through four and two thirds. And here is Kiner Falefa. Fly ball to right in the third. Kluber's feeling he's getting the ball, he wants to throw it right away. Clips the outside corner one and one. Grounded to third, Urshela. And that'll do it here in the fifth as Kluber works a one, two, three. He's retired the last eight Rangers in a row. Tonight's injury report brought to you by Montefiore doing more. Gary Sanchez, who exited last night's game early due to cramping in his left hamstring, is available off the bench, according to Aaron Boone. Also noteworthy, John Carlos Stanton, who did some work in the weight room yesterday and also hit in the cage, did some limited activity on the field today. Aaron Boone continues to say that he is making progress and they are hopeful that he'll be able to come off the injured list when the 10 days are up. And not listed on that graphic was Aaron Hicks. No new news there. He's still taking those anti-inflammatories, Aaron Boone said. No no decision has been made with Aaron Hicks. We go to the six. Montefiore scoreboard. Nothing, nothing. Yankees have two hits. The Rangers have yet to get a base runner other than a walk. Count 0-1 on Higashioka. So as great as Kluber has been, Young has matched him zero for zero in the run towel, the run column. And he's have a couple of singles. Judge had a single in the first. Glaber Torres an infield single in the second. The other base runners for the Yankees, LeMahieu walked and Torres walked. The Yankees have also hit into three double plays. You know, Paul mentioned the uh, the slider that looks so devastating. Texas is 0 for 8 against that pitch. Six strikeouts, so they've had nine swings and seven misses on that pitch.
2 2. 3 and 2 on Higashioka. And Tyler Wade will have his first at bat. And a walk to Higashioka to start off the sixth inning. Good at bat by Higgy. He was around the strike zone the whole at bat, but just he was patient enough to lay off. Now you've got some decisions to make if you're Aaron Boone or Tyler Waite. You'll possibly put a runner in motion, possibly a bunt, or do you just sit back and wait for a couple big hits? Well, Wade took over for Lamar, who on a ground ball is short in the third inning. Grabbed his right hamstring and walked off the field in a lot of pain. 1-0. You know, Michael, back when a hit and run was, you know, a big part of baseball, it, uh, you know, this was a, like a perfect guy to do it off of because, you know, he's around the plate. He's not overpowering, so as a hitter, you know you're going to get something that you can usually put in play. And it was a pretty sure sure bet from a manager's point of view to you know you're going to make contact and good things will happen. Young has thrown 72 pitches this year. That's the most. So he's at 61 right now. And he's over what he's done in terms of innings. So he's entering somewhat uncharted territory. This guy the other way, two and two. Three and two. Again, lefty on lefty. Hard to run off if you're on first base, but I would not hesitate. You know, if I was a manager here that Tyler Wade could put the ball in play or allow that runner to go. Stays put, and that one is lined into right center field. It's going to split the outfielders and go to the wall. Higashioka is at third. They're going to wave him home. Here's the throw. He's in there with the Yankees' first run. An RBI double for Wade, and the Yankees are up 1-0. Oh, really good at bat by Tyler Wade. And, Michael, we talked about it last night when Hickey came in off the bench and got a hit. Sometimes when you're not starting, you, you go to the ballpark, your mind's at ease. All of a sudden, you're in the game. You don't overthink things. A little four-seamer right there, and he just lines it in the right field gap. Give Kluber some runs. The way he's throwing the ball, it's not going to take many. Well, Wade ended up getting a triple, the Yankees' second triple of the year. And Higashioka scores ahead of the throw. So now he's at third. Nobody out. Yankee bench loves it. And now the Rangers bring the infield in with LeMayu at the plate. And on artificial turf, the infield in is about halfway. This is an awkward situation for Texas. The best, league's best with runner in scoring position. Nobody out. And to figure he's going to be able to get the job done, and it makes it that much easier with the infield in.
Bullpen getting ready. Brett Martin. Two and oh. See a lot of hitters, Michael, with you know, big at bats, men in scoring position, like everything's in a rush. You, you know, you're trying to get it done, you're in a hurry. DJ LeMayhew, if you just looked at his expressions and the you know the way he goes about it, you wouldn't know anybody's on base or if he's leading off an inning. High fly ball, left field coming over Calhoun near the line. He'll make the catch. Tagging is Wade. He'll score easily. It's a sack fly for LeMayhew. And the Yankees lead 2 0. Again, another big run right there when your pitch starting pitcher, Corey Kluber's throwing the ball the way he is. Anyone you can tack on is good. And Mayhew gets the job done. Calhoun running towards the line. It's going to be very difficult. It wasn't that deep of a fly ball, but his movement towards the line. It's going to make it almost impossible to stop and make a good throw home to get Tyler Wade. One out. Here's Voight. 0 and 1. This is his third time through the order, and it's the first time against any opponent he's done that this season. Oh and two. One, two. Two and two. So he's been low three straight times after starting out 0 and 2. On point. Yankees lead 2 0 as they put the first runs of the game on the board here in the sixth inning. Well, this is a young season high. And he walks, avoid. You wonder, Paul, he looks so sharp in five innings if he's tiring a bit now. Yeah, you see him starting to pick a little bit and try to throw perfect pitches. He's not going to. Challenge guys, it's probably going to be it as Chris Woodward is heading to the mound. So, a pretty good performance by Young, but uh, he's going up against a guy who has special stuff tonight, and he's going to leave the ball game trailing 2 0 with a run on first being his responsibility. Brett Martin comes in, he'll face Aaron Judge when we get back. Brett Martin will appear in his 14th game and he will face Aaron Judge with a runner on first and one man out Yankees up two nothing here in the sixth Judge is one for two he's had two or more hits in six of his last eight games One and one.
two and two. Well, you look at Martin right over the top, big tall lefty, not a overpowering either. I mean, 93 four seamer, curveball, slider, 24 percent of the time. So kind of one of those lefties that again, you know, you got to be patient, wait for him to make a mistake. Swing and a tip into the glove of Trevino. Strike out of Judge two way. Aaron saw every pitch in his repertoire and finally got a good pitch to hit. The two seam fastball just hit the inside corner, swung right through it. So here's Gio Urshela. Voits at first with two outs. Urshela 0 for 2 against Young. And he hits one sharply foul outside of third. Some laughs between the battery. See that. You just don't see that much, Michael. As locked in as Corey Kluber is to see him laughing in the dugout. Wow. Yeah, they usually He's got that magic. They leave him alone. Very stoic. Huh? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. He's got that switch. He can turn it on and turn it off. When David Wells was working on his perfect game, nobody would go near him. And then David Cohn sat next to him, started joking around. Break out a knuckleball, I dare you. Mm -hmm. Just to break the tension. That one is ripped down the left field line. Foul. Pretty close to the foul pole. Into a bunch of Yankee fans. Yankees two, the Rangers nothing. Rangers have had one base run or a walk by Charlie Culberson. Two and two. And this is the longest half inning for Kluber. A lot of laughter. I mean, he's usually, as you said, very stoic, Paul. A lot of smiles. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did, said Bill Miller. And two strikeouts for Martin to end the inning. But the Yankees get two runs on one hit. And there's very few things better to look at than a triple. A really fast guy, Tyler Wade with a triple, brings in the first run. Yankees lead 2 0. We told you about the Liberty. The Nets are starting the playoffs, and the Yankees are playing pretty good baseball as well. So we go to the sixth inning, Montefiore scoreboard, 2-3-0, and, oh, and zeros across for the Rangers. Kluber deals to Culberson, and there's a strike. Culberson, he walked in the third inning. Popped up, shallow right center. LeMahieu makes the play. One down here in the sixth. Some action in the bullpen. It's Taylor Hearn. One of the five lefties they have in the bullpen, four righties. Young had been uh, pitching out of the bullpen, so they were carrying six lefties in the pen. 
but he might have established himself in the rotation the way he pitched tonight. Here's Trevino. And a strike from Kluber. Oh, and two. Kluber has seven strikeouts. What, it is just amazing to me. I, you know, I've seen power pitchers throw the ball by people, great chains. I, I don't know that I've seen any better with a, a slider. Just time and time again, being able to throw this thing where he wants. Fly ball away toward the line, makes the play two away. Back to the top of the order and Willie Calhoun. He struck out looking in the first and popped a second in the third. So Kluber has faced one batter over the limit. That's how good he's been. That one batter is because of Culberson's walk in the third inning. The 1 0. Ground it. Right to Torres. And you might want to give your friends a call. Go on social media. Could be something fun happening in Texas. We'll go to the 7. Well, welcome to Now York. The world's greatest city is now open. Thanks to vaccines and the resilience of New Yorkers, the city is ready for you. Just like the Yankees, it's time to come out and play. Be sure to hashtag your photos with hashtag Now York. If you're here at the stadium, out in the Bronx, or elsewhere across the five boroughs as we get back out there. Well, Kluber has not allowed a hit through six innings, and Taylor Hearn now comes on to face the Yankees in the seventh. Just one batter over the minimum. He's faced 19 batters through six innings, and uh, Paul Kluber looks great. He really does, and, I mean, that's stating the obvious. I mean, yeah, there's no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, you're looking at 25, 26 sliders that he's thrown tonight. I can remember one that hit the middle of the plate, and uh, Garcia fouled it back. He has been phenomenal, especially with his slider so far. So Glaber Torres will lead off against Hearn. Pitch outside. Reno. So six innings in, Paul, you, you've played in these sorts of games. When do players start to, to know something's going on? I think you just hit about that spot uh, at the end of the six and you you know you got nine outs uh, you're thinking but you know the, the good thing about games like this is the game's not out of hand so it's not it doesn't really consume your mind as a hitter I mean obviously I don't know about a pitcher but as a player you know you're still in a two to nothing game where you know you're, you're worried about trying to win the game but believe me you do know what's going on because he's throwing the ball that well. And Glaber Torres picks up his second hit. It's bobbled by Garcia, and Torres will stay at first, so he's two for two with a walk. He 
remember when Glaber Torres just broke uh, and, you know, came up. I mean, these are the type of hits you saw him get inside the ball. Boy, I tell you what, if he would just stay right there, you're going to see great things happen to him offensively. And Duhar has grounded into two double plays. The Yankees have hit into three on the night. They lead 2 nothing. both runs in the sixth inning. One and one. And Duhard down on strikes. We got a really good pitch to hit too. Hearn having trouble throwing strikes. Maybe went out tied to strike zone for strike one. Then he got kind of a hanging breaking ball. And swung right through it. Now to bring up Gardner. Grounded to first and a fly ball to center. Torres at first with one man out. We're in the seventh inning. Runner goes, throw to second, not in time. And Connor Falefa is pointing to the dugout to check that out. We shall see. Well, safe on the attempt, and then let's see if he went off. Wakamatsu right there will check. Now, when there was a disconnect, ooh. what do you think, Paul? Yeah, that's going to be a tough one. There were so many different things there that the glove actually missed him when the hand was off, then it came back. I don't know. This is a flip of a coin. But again, remember, if there's not a definitive, he was called safe. They will not challenge. Michael, I, don't whisper anything, but I, I think we're starting to see some old time baseball. Last night, what, six singles in an inning? Yeah. All of a sudden, great defense. Now we're stealing bases. What do we got going on here? Just old fashioned baseball? Well, you know what? If, if the home runs aren't going to come, you, you've got to you got to play that game. <laughs> I kind of like it. How about you? I like it.
Hearn deals. And there's strike two and two. Brilliant through six, Corey Kluber. Just one base runner, a walk, keeping loose. Pitch count's in great shape. And at this point, the signing by the Yankees, and it looks like a stroke of genius. You know, the first couple of starts you worried was the stuff good enough, but it's good enough, and he is really commanding it. He's pitched very, very well. Three and two as Torres stays put at second. You know, a lot of people criticize the Yankees when he started off slowly. Why why would they sign a guy through just one inning last year? There are a lot of teams in on him. A lot of teams mm -hmm. liked it when he threw for them. And you know, there's a lot of back and forth. He had worked exclusively with Eric Cressy, who was the Yankees director of performance. And um, Cressy gave the Yankees a great read on how healthy he was and he decided to go with the Yankees but there are a lot of clubs involved that saw the same thing the Yankees saw you know you go back after the injury it was just too big of a, a challenge or a gamble for the Texas Rangers I think they had a another option year on him which was big money and you know it's just, it's it was just too big of a, a gamble for him. 3-2, lined right at Solak, and they're going to make the throw to second to double him up. So the fourth double play by the Yankees is not on, on the ground. It's time for the seventh inning stretch. The no-hitters this year, Musgrove against the Rangers, Rodon against the Indians, John Means uh, at the Mariners, Wade Miley at the Indians, and Spencer Turnbull again at the Mariners, and Madison Bumgarner had won a seven-inning no-hitter. It's not considered a no-hitter. But it was uh, one of the games of a doubleheader, and um, but they count officially five. And um, we go to the seventh inning now with Kluber flirting, heavily flirting with history. As Nick Solak will dig in to start the bottom of the seventh inning. One and zero. Well, this is a guy who has uh, obviously achieved consistent excellence on the mound. He's won two Cy Young Awards. And is dealing on this Wednesday evening in Arlington, Texas. He has struck out Solak twice. Seven strikeouts in all. The only base runner a walk to Charlie Culberson. And 72 pitches going into the seventh inning. Two, three, four in the Ranger order. Sky the other way, one and two. Kluber's 35 years old. His last great year was 2018 with Cleveland 20 and 7, 2.89. He made 33 starts. Two and two. We mentioned just one inning last year for the Texas Rangers on this mound. And then a torn Terrace major muscle in his right shoulder, and he was done for the year. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Pitch out of the strike zone. Solak down on strikes. You know, to me, Michael, that looks like one of those swings as a hitter is like, all right, I'm going to cover a slider. You see a slider, and you just swing at it because you know and recognize it's actually a changeup, and that's what really fooled them. You see, Kluber went to this twice in this count. Solak had all kind of problems with the slider. What a great pitch to change him up. Here's Nate Lowe, a grounder to first and a fly ball to right. Pitch inside, 1-0. and oh. 
just missed low, 2 0. There's a strike. What you love to see, Michael, is this, the sign go down and Kluber a nodding, like in total agreement immediately on the same page with Higgy. Two and two. to be on the same wavelength the 2 2 strike three low down looking ninth strikeout for Kluber uh, what a great job coming back from 2 0 and he actually used a change up in this count too and then went back to a front door fastball see that just tail back hit the inside corner I'll tell you what it's just one of those nights Kluber can throw anything he wants at any time Here's Adolis Garcia. He's 0 for 2. A strikeout and a fly ball to center. And Kluber deals. Two 4 0 for the Yankees. Zeros across for the Rangers. Fastball strike on the outside corner, 1 and 1. And the pitch. Two and one. Yankees two, Texas nothing. And we're getting closer to the point where the score actually becomes the sidebar. There's a strike. Beautiful pitch on the outside corner at the knees. Two and two. He's starting to incorporate the changeup more in this inning than he has in the first, you know, six. So again, it just gives him another weapon. Grounded to short, and Kluber is six outs away from pitching a no-hitter. Brilliant through seven, two nothing Yankees. We go to the eighth. Hyundai scoreboard. Big news developing here in Texas. Six outs away. From a no-hitter is Corey Kluber as the Yankees bat here in the eighth inning. Kyle Higashioka takes outside from Taylor Hearn. Two and zero. Count two and one on Higashioka. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. His walk started the two run sixth inning. The only inning that either team has scored. A big RBI triple by Wade and a sack fly by LeMahieu, and that is the scoring. On the other side of the uh, scorecard, Cooper has faced 22 batters. That's just one over the limit. Just one walk he's allowed. And Higashioka walks. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. 
So here is Tyler Wade. He came into the game after the injury to Ryan Lamar, trying to beat out a ground ball of short. It grabbed his right hamstring. And a strike. One and one. Foul the way, one, two. Well, Selden, Michael, do you come to the ballpark not expecting to play, and all of a sudden you are the team's offense? You drive in one, you score one. That's who we have to play right here in Tyler Wade. Grounded. This could be another double play, and it is. Five double plays by the Yankees tonight. You know, it's really funny, Michael, as I look at this at bat, I mean, some double plays, you kind of roll over a ball, you're out in front. This is actually a good swing from Tyler Wade. I mean, he just happened to hit it at the shortstop, stayed in on a good lefty. You see, this ball's hit hard. That's why these balls are double plays. They just are hit right at the middle infielder. Here's LeMahieu. That one is chopped back to the mound. And that will do it in the top of the eighth inning. Buckle up. Kluber's coming out to pitch the bottom of the eighth. Well, the Yankees have seen this before. Don Larson with the perfect game. Dave Rigetti, a July 4th no-hitter. Jim Abbott. Dwight Gooden. A perfect game for David Wells and David Cohn. The Yankees have had 10 no-hitters thrown in franchise history, not counting Larson's perfect game in Game 5 of the 1956 World Series. George Mogridge started it in 1917, the most recent one in 1999 by our colleague, David Cohn. Hyundai scoreboard, 2-0 Yankees over Texas as Kluber makes his way to the mound. He has never pitched nine innings without allowing a hit. So this is new territory for him. And he will face Gallo, Davis, and Connor Falefa. Last time the Yankees had a no-hit bid through seven innings, it was Phil Hughes in 2010 at Oakland. And here's Gallo. That one's popped up. And that Gashioka runs out of room. In the Phil Hughes seven inning one, he was six outs away, but Eric Chavez hit a leadoff infield single that bounced off Phil's arm. The Yankees still won the game three to one. Gallo's 0 for 2. Fly ball to center and a strikeout. The 0-1. Pitch outside, 1-1. One and one. Eighty-seven pitches for Kluber. Here in the eighth inning. And the righty deals. One and two. His nickname is Klubot, and he is working tonight with machine-like efficiency. He is in sync with his catcher, Kyle Higashioka.
He has nine strikeouts on the night. Grounded softly to first. Luke Voigt steps on the bag. One away here in the eighth. Again, another changeup, and he was not using that earlier in the game. And why should you? When you have the slider that he had, boy, all of a sudden now he's starting to mix that changeup. And that just gives the hitter a, another look, and not a good one for Joey Gallo. Here's Chris Davis. He's 0 for 2, grounded to second and struck out. He's a number six hitter in the order, the DH for the Texas Rangers. And the pitch. Fastball is low, 1 0. Line drive and caught on one hop by Urshela across the diamond. They get Davis two away here in the eighth. Well, we'll wait for the replay, but again, I think this was another changeup, and it looked like it was up in the strike zone. Davis gets good wood on it. I'll tell you what, if you want a ball, a tough play, hit it to Urshela. Up now a very tough hitter, Isaiah Kaina Falefa. He is 0 for 2. Fly ball to right, ground ball to third. That's a great breaking ball for a strike 0 and 1. Kluber rocks and deals. Lined into right field. Right there is Wade, and Kluber is three outs away from pitching a no-hitter. We go to the ninth. Michael, this is getting fun, isn't it? <laughs> it's time for the Audi Electric Moment. Visit your Tri-State Audi dealer and experience the fully electric Audi e-tron today. And Corey Kluber has been electric all night. And that was the only base runner. That walk to Culberson. He's had a breaking ball that they're just flailing at. Very little chance. He has been that good. Nine strikeouts, one walk, just faced one batter over the minimum. He is three outs away. 2 4 0 for the Yankees. Three big zeros on the Texas line. And this is one of those games, Paul, that a pitcher can't get caught up in his own possible accomplishment because it's 2 nothing. You really need to get every single out. Yeah, I, I think that's actually an advantage. Uh, you know, if it's a blowout, that's the only thing that consumes your mind, and it's very hard to even play through it. The pitcher, it's all about whether he gets it or not. You're in a 2 to nothing game. Uh, the game is still out there, and uh, that's what you, you want as a player. Oh and one. No one's doing anything but staying in the same spot in the pen. Baseball is a superstitious bunch. Michael, if I walk the same path between innings, is that, does that count as being superstitious? It could be. <laughs> I'm wearing a path around the couch up here. Bill Miller, I don't think, has called the check swing yet. <laughs> so one and two. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, so obviously the Yankees are batting now. When you take the field in the ninth inning, are there nerves involved? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're thinking of all the, the plays that can happen. You're thinking of all, you know, the guys that are coming up. You know, do you take a step here? Do you take a step there? You know, you 
every everything that you could possibly do as a fielder uh, is going through your mind, obviously. Chapman's getting ready just in case because it is a 2-0 game. Here's Aaron Judge. Fly ball, right center. Garcia on the run. Two away. Two outs here in the top of the ninth inning. Here's Urshela. And there's a strike. Owen oh two. Kluber's highest pitch inning, 15, and he's done that three times. He's had three single digit pitch innings, so his pitch count's 93. He's in very good shape going to the bottom of the ninth. And that will do it. And now things are going to get very, very interesting as Corey Kluber will try to pitch himself into the history books while getting the Yankees a victory. And Paul, let's let's go over his performance. It, it has been extraordinary in every sense. He's, he's one batter away from being perfect through eight innings. Yeah, a good fastball located it well, but his slider was his bread and butter. I literally counted two sliders that he hit the middle of the plate with all night. I mean, he has been unhittable with that. He started to work his change up in a little later in the game. It's been effective. Uh, you know, what can you say? He has been dominant, and uh, even when he is pitching behind, he comes in with, you know, pitches on the corner, not hitting the middle of the plate with anything. Well, he has been that good, obviously, and these are the batters he'll face. The only guy has got on base is Charlie Culberson. He walked, and uh, that walk came with one out in the third inning. Then Jose Trevino, who is 0 for 2, and back to the top of the order, Willie Calhoun, will be just the first Texas Ranger to face him four times. That's how extraordinary Kluber's performance has been. And the Corey Kluber story is an amazing one, having pitched just one inning last year. Signing as a free agent with the Yankees for one year, $11 million. The Rays and the Red Sox pursued him as well. He's a two-time Cy Young Award winner out of Stetson University. He is not your typical hard-throwing dominating pitcher, but Paul, he's the type of pitcher that when he's on, he's dominating without velocity. Yeah, you can see early in the year he was starting to have, uh, you know, a good slider here and then miss. You know, he has consistency again, and that is what is his, I mean, when you look back at his great years, it was because he was able to consistently throw nasty sliders, and he's done that all night. Well, first up against the veteran right-hander is Charlie Culberson. And there's a strike. 0-1. Culberson, Trevino, and Calhoun in the bottom of the ninth inning. On one hop to LeMahieu. One away. Mike, I'm going to tell you right now, that is not the play you want as a player in a no-hitter. This is an in-between hop. DJ LeMay, who makes it look kind of easy, but I tell you what, that is a tough play to start off the ninth inning. Kluber's demeanor never betrays what's going on on the field. Always looks stoic on the mound. Doesn't show emotion. 
And David Dahl is going to pinch it for Jose Trevino. Tried to go back door, misses outside, 1-0. and So a new batter into the mix here with Dahl. Swing and a miss, one and one. Again, the changeup. We're in a fastball count coming off the bench as a pinch hitter. Very hard to adjust to something off speed. One and two. That one is laced into right field on the run is Wade. He's there, and they are one out away from a no-hitter. I tell you, Michael, there was one guy that I was going to tell you that I kind of felt sorry for, and it was Tyler Wade. I mean, he's not in his natural position. This ball's hit off the end of the bat just enough, but you could misjudge a little bit. I'll tell you, a great jump and a great play. Well, if you feel what your heart is beating right now watching this, imagine what Kluber's is doing. Kluber against Calhoun. Strike one. Calhoun 0 for 3. Struck out looking. Pop to second. Ground ball is short. Ground ball to Gleber Torres. And that'll do it. A no hitter for Corey Kluber. On a Wednesday night in Texas, Kluber becomes part of forever. Paul, you've played in three perfect games. You almost came within one batter of announcing a perfect game. Corey Kluber tonight was absolutely magnificent. Phenomenal. I mean, if you look at the pitches he missed tonight, you could count them on one hand. Another slider. This is a good way to end it, and I tell you what, he'll appreciate this more than probably some of those Cy Youngs. So come back where he came from. And throw a game, and I guarantee the people in Texas didn't realize that greatness would happen with Corey Kluber in a Yankee uniform instead of a Rangers uniform. What an amazing performance by Kluber. And Paul has mentioned what this guy has gone through. Uh, the shoulder issue, allowing him just to pitch one inning last year. And then the last season in Cleveland, the comebacker that essentially broke his arm. The two Cy Youngs seem like such a distant memory, but he has achieved greatness on this mound in Texas. Man, oh man, 
That is just great. He is now part of baseball immortality as he pitches the Yankees' 11th regular season no-hitter. And he was, in a word, brilliant. High first again. Uh, Meredith, I think you have somebody special. Corey, two-time Cy Young Award winner. Up until tonight, you had not thrown. Corey, two-time Cy Young Award winner. Up until tonight, you had not thrown a no-hitter. Can you just describe the emotion you felt as you watched that final out being recorded in the ninth? Uh, I think it's all kinds of emotions. I mean, I think it's excitement. Uh, you know, probably some relief, too, that it's over with. Uh, but, I mean, Higgy was, was unbelievable back there tonight. I think, uh, you know, kept him off balance pretty much. Pretty much the entire game, um, you know, I made, I made a couple pitches that probably weren't where we wanted them, and they they were fortunate, or we were fortunate enough that they hit them right at some people. You mentioned keeping them off balance. Your breaking pitch seems almost unhittable tonight. What made it so good in your estimation? Um, you know, I think it probably establishing the other pitches in the zone so that they had to respect that stuff and not just, uh, you know, sit on the one pitch. Um, you know, I think that's probably the key most nights. We saw you in the dugout in the top of the ninth inning, just staring at the field, waiting to go out there in the bottom of the ninth. What's going through your head in that situation as you're three outs away from a no-hitter? Um, just trying to make it as normal as possible. I mean, obviously it's not, but just trying to stick with, uh, you know, your normal routine as much as you can and, uh, you know, try not to to let the situation get the best of you. I mean, I think that, um, you know, there's, there's going to be there's going to be situations that probably you have a little more adrenaline going than others, and I think you just try to try to make it as normal as you possibly can. At what point in time do you start thinking about it? Um, I'm not sure. You know, I, I think I was I was probably aware of it, but I don't know if I really started thinking about it. Maybe after the sixth, something like that. Oftentimes, teammates say they try to leave you alone in the dugout. They don't want to distract you. Did anybody say anything to you in that dugout, Corey? Um, you know, I feel like maybe aside from the last inning, it was pretty normal in there. Um, you know, Higgy and I talk a fair amount after an inning just about, you know, what we saw and things like that. Uh, we continue to do that. But, I mean, aside from that, I feel like it was just, you know, kind of a normal, normal dugout scenario for my pitch. It didn't seem like there were a lot of balls hit hard tonight. But in that ninth inning, when you see the ball go out to right field, does your heart start beating a little faster there as you see Wade trying to track it down? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you're like I said, you're you're aware of, of what's going on. Um, but I, I, you know, I think that play is probably magnified even more by the fact that you know he's he's an infielder by trait, and you know wasn't uh, wasn't out there to start the game. And you know, I feel like he made a couple good plays out there once once he ended up out there. So uh, I think it makes him even more impressive. I know it's fresh. I know it just happened. But what will you remember most about tonight? Um. I just think it was a lot of fun. You know, I think it was a it was a well played game on both sides. You know, um, you know we we were able to scratch a couple of runs across, and uh, I'm not sure it was the fifth or the sixth. But you know, aside from that, it was a well played game, and um, you know, it, just, it was just fun to be a part of. Corey, I'll let you enjoy it. Congratulations on an absolutely fantastic performance tonight. Thank you very much, Michael. We'll send it back over to you. Well, as he is stoic, straight faced. He is certainly not celebrating on the field. He'll probably get a little happier in that clubhouse with his teammates. But what you just saw was magnificent. This is a guy, as we mentioned, who has battled so much. 35 years old. Is Corey Kluber back? You bet Corey Kluber's back. He was absolutely brilliant. One walk away from a perfect game. But he'll take the no-hitter and run with it.